Alrighty, so we are teaching. Uh, I, I was I was taught I was told to teach a uh, specific shot, but we're going to expand beyond that. Uh, I'm going to teach basically my my weeb stances, my nerd stances. These aren't really standard stuff for, for fighting. Uh, so uh, it can be fun and and it allows for a lot of interesting exchanges. Uh, but we're going to go through like the standard stance real fast uh, because that's worth having. So if, if Turek and I are to square up, what I'm going to do under normal circumstances is I'm going to have my arm about in the middle of all of the quadrants. Uh, we won't worry about keeping the quadrants right now, looking up on other videos. Uh, but I really want my thumb to be about dead center on, on, on all of this, just above my belly button by about six inches. And, and this is going to allow me to block the most common areas pretty quickly. I'm going to have my, my sword foot forward, feet about shoulders width apart, and toes pointed forward. This is, this is just your standard stance for single sword. Okay? So the, the weird stances uh, that, we're, that, that I'm talking about uh, involve things like the samurai draw. I'll do, I'll do this every once in a while. Um, and then the, the last one that's kind of one trick pony but still fun to teach is, is this one. Uh, so we're going to go through those and, and the, the few strengths and many weaknesses of each of those stances and a couple of shots for all of them. Uh, so, so we're going to go through um, the first shot that I'm going to teach is the one that I was actually assigned to teach. Uh, I call it Shunten Satsu, we won't worry about why I call it that, but it's from this stance, okay? So, so feet are going to be the same as your, as your normal stance, but instead of having my left arm back to either hand block or stay out of the way, I'm going to have it at the tip of, of my sword. Now, what this stance is actually good for in a legitimate way is if you are single sword against a pole arm, it allows you to more easily block those hard to reach shots. So if my opponent has a pole arm and I'm charging with a single sword, one of the easiest shots I'm going to throw is going to be cross body leg, right? It, it's hard for me to advance on a pole arm while blocking down here. It just doesn't work out overly well. So what this allows me to do is to charge a pole arm, and if they were to throw that shot, to drop my left hand as though I was using a sword in my left hand, and block between my hands. So even if he throws a very heavy chop, it goes between the hands, and it's an easy block, which allows me to continue pushing forward and go in there. So that's like the one legitimate good thing about this stance. Now we're going to go into the dumb stuff about the stance, which is that over my guard is a relatively easy shot. And you have to acknowledge the fact that, that these are going to be easy ways for your opponents to farm hits, okay? So with all of these stances, since your guard is not a neutral spot, you are going to be relying on your footwork to keep you alive, and your distance control to keep you safe. So in this case, if, if John were to throw, I can back up and keep in the stance, or I can pull back in and I can stay still or advance. So, so there are a couple of ways of surviving this, but recognize your opponent is probably going to throw those shots, or at least is going to keep in mind those are weaknesses of yours. So, when I originally did this stance, the only shot that I did for it was pulling the pommel this way, and then popping that way. So I'm trying to draw my opponent's guard over, and then, and then going out of there. It can work sometimes, it's kind of a funny thing, but it, it's not a high percentage shot, and it's not without risk. So you have to get close enough to start doing this without your opponent throwing shots. The, the shot that I was asked to teach, the Shunten Satsu, is, is a little bit different. So, John, if you can take a step forward, okay? So, what this is relying on is the fact that to read a shot, 90% of people are going to be paying attention to your shoulders and your elbows and how they move. So, this is lying to your opponent with your shoulders and your elbows, which is that I'm going to chamber a shot as though I'm hacking at my opponent's uh, uh, upper bicep, sword, sword bicep, okay? So, so this, is, this is the shot that I'm faking. But what I'm going to do while I'm doing that is instead of having a strong wrist to throw a, a, a hard shot in there, I'm going to have a weak wrist, which means that as my shoulder and elbow go for that spot, I'm going to slap down with my off hand. And as I slap down with my off hand, I'm going to have my wrist go a little limp, so that instead of this shot, it's this shot. Okay. Now the, the shoulder and elbow movements should be identical between those two, so if my opponent is just quick reading me and doesn't know that this shot is coming, their arm should go up into a, a high guard over here, and you should slip just below the top. Okay, so it's it's a nice quick kill against people that aren't expecting it. You don't know that it's there, uh, and that's 
that's what I was actually assigned to teach. So we're going to go through some of the other stances, and because they're fun, uh, and and I've kind of exhausted this stance anyway. Like I've, I've listed like the couple of strengths, the couple of shots, and what you really need to watch out for. Also point point out that when your hand is on the weapon, it's really hilarious. You're going to get away with this only once. Um, when someone thinks they can hit that that hand, thinking that it is not on the weapon, that yeah. they would just be hand blocking, and then you get to giggle and say, huh, "This was on the yeah, weapon." Yeah, this is this is technically hand on weapon. It may come up. It's kind of funny. Don't worry about it too much. But but this is by the rule book very clearly stated. This is hand on weapon. So so those are both hand on weapon. Feel free to look it up. So so we're going to go oh, into wow. into my my absolute favorite goof off stance. Which is which is the the Rurouni Kenshin, the Shogun, Toko Jutsu, whatever we're gonna call it on this particular occasion, is going to be here. Now, this even more so than the other stance, you need to use distance control to keep yourself alive. Okay, the, about the only block that you can throw out of this is that people are generally going to attack this side, and you can sometimes pick up a block coming across like this. Unfortunately, picking up a block like this doesn't leave you in a good offensive spot anyway. It, it's, it's very little different than your opponent throwing a hack for this arm and blocking over here. It's good that you're still alive, but you're not really gaining anything off of, off of that opener. Okay? So generally speaking, when my opponent throws a shot at me, I want to just not be there. Right? That, that's going to be the goal pretty much universally. Okay? So with, since I have long arms, this allows me to do a handful of things. Um, but, but what I'm really gaining out of this is kind of hard to describe we're going to go through it, okay? That I and my opponent both know that there are only two ways of coming out of this stance in a natural way. I can hack at this hip, or I can come up and over and hack it at that shoulder over there. there there's no real way of fluidly coming out of this other than those two shots. I mean, you can do slight variations where you're coming up and hitting this shoulder, but it's almost exactly the same block to do this as it is to do this. Um, your opponent would have to badly misread you for any of that to go right for you. So what we're doing with this, with this stance is overwhelmingly we are trying to fake one reaction and then do another. The only other strengths you can have out of this are to essentially start to come out of this stance, shift into a normal stance while your opponent reacts very strongly to what you're doing. So if I start coming in this way, my opponent reacts very strongly by blocking down hard, and I shift here, I'm starting this fight from an effectively neutral position against an opponent that has their guard way down and to the right. Okay? Same thing for here, right? I, I can do certain things from there. So grant their accepting the fact that we only have a couple of ways out of this situation, let's maximize all of that. Okay? So the, the absolute most basic stuff is to sit here and start to fake up for this shoulder, right? And come down. Here, here. Right? It's relatively easy to do, and if your opponent reacts strongly to it, great. It's harder to hear here, but you can do it against slower opponents. As, as long as they're reacting strongly enough to it, and they don't have the hand speed and the footwork to get out of that, you'll get some kills. Not a high percentage shot. Okay? So mostly I'm going to, I'm going to fake out of here because it's a natural thing. Um, John, if you could grab a shield real fast and put it in your left hand, or put it in your right hand. Right hand? Yeah. Um, so we're going to go through, there are, there are a couple of nice little entrances out of this, because one of my absolute favorites is against lefty shieldmen very specifically. If you do the, the stance reset after going like this, most lefties are going to react very strongly where they're going to put their shield way off to the side and they're going to close. Because this is something that people do often enough to them that it's a very standard, easy reaction. So I've reset, knowing where he's going to go, pulled across, and I'm able to stab my opponent. Um, with a little bit more combat spread that we don't have because we're, in a, we're on a porch, this allows for here, where, where my opponent isn't on top of me. And, and you actually can get some kills against some very good lefties doing it, uh, so long as you pull it off correctly and they are sufficiently surprised by what you're doing. So that's kind of a nice thing. Um, outside of that, uh, the, the uh, go ahead and put the shield down. That's the only gimmicky thing we have for that one. Outside of that, uh, there is what I, I jokingly call the secret shot of this dance. Um, but this is going to get weirdly complicated, but it's funny. So so stick with us. Okay. So you're grabbing here as though this is your as though this is your scabbard, and this is your sword arm. Okay. 
So if my opponent understands my fighting style, if they understand what I can do out of this situation, one of the best things that I can do is to commit very strongly to, to a slash to this side with an empty hand. So what I'm going to do with that is I'm going to, to step in and go like this. If my opponent is tracking my elbows and shoulder like they normally do, they're going to block for this shot very strongly because I'm committing to this, okay? As that arm comes up, you can slash across with the left hand. It's silly, it's dumb, it works surprisingly often. So, so that's kind of that stance. Uh, again, the, the real difficulty is you need to use footwork to keep yourself alive. If you don't have a very, very solid understanding of distance control and very active mobility with your feet, you will die very quickly in this stance, okay? So on to the last one. The last one is, is a one-trick pony. There's not a whole lot of strengths or weaknesses here, but we're going to go through it, okay? So, so this, I, I'm, I'm pulling back here. I'm putting my, my, my hand out here as almost like a pool cue like this. So go ahead and take a step forward because you're almost out of frame. <laughs> no problem. So so what this gives me is is again that whole my opponent can slash my left hand all they want, and as long as they slash the hand itself is hand on weapon. The difficulty is that if they slash for the forearm, which is a very similar spot, I'm hoped. Okay? So so keep that in mind. But a valid response to that is if my opponent slashes to the forearm, is just to move out of the way. Okay? You, you're allowed. You, you've got all the control over this weapon that you want. So if, if they slash for it, you, could, you can move out of this position. It's not necessary. So everything that I can do positively out of this is based off the fact that it looks like I'm going to try to harpoon my sword through my opponent's chest and out the back. People don't like getting stabbed even with pool noodle by something like that, especially not when it's a big guy behind it. Okay? So my opponent is going to be worried about me coming up and just Gah! Which means that they're going to react very strongly to that. The best fakes are things that your opponent is worried about or confirming what they already know is about to happen and this does both of them. So you tend to get very strong reactions when I come forward and I, and I go like that. Most players are going to push very hard across because they do not want to get stabbed. Okay? So the one trick pony out of this stance is here, reset, and swing for the arm. Okay? It works sometimes. It's kind of funny. Uh, it's not a stance that's great, but you can goof off with it, and that's like really what I'm trying to do here. Do it a couple more times. Okay. So we're, we're, we're going to go for it. Here, here, here. Okay? It, 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 if he doesn't just decide to back up fully, uh, to disengage, this will work. If he decides to take a half step back and come across, it will probably still work. If he decides to dig in and go across, this, this will definitely work. But here, okay. So I'm going to eat up a lot of ground by stepping forward and then stepping forward. Okay. So so this staff comes in. Got it. Because you're as you're bringing your right foot forward, that gives you a little bit more reach with your mm -hmm. right arm. Yeah, yeah. Which, which also has the advantage of, once I've thrown here, I'm in essentially my neutral stance. Once I've thrown that opening salvo, I'm in my normal stance, and my opponent probably is not. So, at the very least, if I'm not dead, yeah. that point he's right here. It, it, allows, it allows for very easy double taps. I prefer going for the leg off of this one, just because it's hard to misread what happened. So, so here, there. It's, it's relatively easy to get that kill if you can get that first shot. They're very unlikely to survive what's about to happen next. So that's about it for, for the, the, the weeb stances, the, the, the nerd stances. Um, so hopefully you enjoyed it. If you picked up anything from it, I'm sorry. Uh, and uh, hopefully we'll see you on the ditch field before too long. Thanks for watching, guys.